So let's talk about what happens when you get lost at sea, way out at sea, and you don't have a lot of instruments. I'll let you know in a minute what you can actually have. But I just want to say before we really get started that this problem doesn't seem like a huge problem to us. Later, I'll let you think about having an iPhone at sea, and you're not going to be too lost, at least for a while. But a long time ago, this was a huge problem. And solving what's known as the problem of the longitude was a challenge that was as great as curing cancer is today. And there are wonderful books about it, including this one by Davis Sobel that also comes in this illustrated edition shown here on the screen. And a story that's featured in that book is the story of Admiral Sir Cloudsley Shovel, who's shown here in this little picture. And uh, Admiral uh, Sir Cloudsley went off and uh, he had a big armada of ships in 1707 that was headed back uh, for England. And let's just say he wasn't exactly where he thought he was. And they ran aground on the Scilly Isles. The Scilly Isles are not very far from England. And today you could use a device like your iPhone to easily see where they are and know exactly where you are relative to them. And interestingly enough, you could have done that even on a, the iPhone first model in 2007, 300 years after shovel ran aground. And today we're really used to all kinds of technology letting us navigate and plan navigation, predict our path from place to place. So for example, here you see the Rome to Rio website telling us how to get from Cambridge to the Scilly Isles, and it even tells us how to get from Harvard to the airport by subway. Every little step-by-step -step direction is just planned out for us, and all we have to do is follow instructions. But now let's imagine that you're out at sea. It's a lovely evening. You take out your iPhone again to look at where you are relative to the Scilly Isles. <gasps> but oh no, it runs out of battery. This is not good. You look around and you say, oh, I see the sun. I kind of know where I am. In the morning, you might still see the sun. Uh, but there's not much else. So the way that people navigate on land is actually using literally landmarks, things like mountains or where did you leave your tent. And then at night, when you can't necessarily see landmarks, you can look up at the sky and you can use the patterns that the stars make uh, as the Earth rotates. And you can use their paths and their positions. And if you know something about what those are expected to be, you can figure out things like what latitude you're at and what time it is. It turns out to be extremely difficult to figure out your longitude, how far you are east to west on the Earth using just the stars. And we'll explain that later in this Help I'm Lost discussion in the Prediction X course. But again, you are out at sea. So no landmarks for you, just these sky marks. So all right, let's try with your dead iPhone to use some instruments to navigate. So what do you need if you're the navigator at sea? Well, it turns out you're going to need items to measure all of these different things. You're going to measure your speed, your direction. It would be helpful if you knew the time. And if you had a map, that'll be really good. It's pretty important that you're good with math. And if you're going to use the stars, you're going to need to measure a lot of angles. And you're going to need some instruments in order to measure those on the sky. And so over time, these particular kinds of devices and even the uh, math that's needed to connect all of them uh, in a calculation of your position have gotten much, much better, much more sophisticated, and much easier to actually execute. So people have known for a long time how to navigate at sea, and they've known that if you can know the time at two different places on Earth, you can actually figure out your longitude. But actually making use of that knowledge is extremely difficult, and we'll explain that later in the course. But just in terms of uncertainty and how sure somebody is where they are today, a lot of that depends on the things that you see listed here down the left side of this what's going to become a graph about how good your maps are, how well you know what direction you're heading, what time it is, how well you can measure these angles of celestial bodies, and how well you know your speed. And then again, you have to put that all together using math. So today, we'll see at the end, we have almost no problem doing any of this as long as our iPhone doesn't run out of battery. 
But let's go back to something like 1200 AD and just look approximately in this kind of schematic way at what the problems were. So the maps were terrible. Uh, direction measurement depended on how good an instrument you had to measure your direction. And it wasn't too hard. You can see that the little bar for measuring your direction is a little smaller than the one for maps. Okay, Time measurement was quite terrible. You're talking about you know, things like gnomons and uh, water clocks and things like that. And angle measurement, uh, there are some crude instruments that you can see in the tools of the navigator section of this course. And astronomical measurement was done with the naked eye because there were no telescopes in uh, 1200 AD. And measuring speed was not something that could be done accurately on a ship either. Even the knots that are used, the nautical um, unit for speed, weren't really employed until a bit later. So if we go up from the bottom now in 1675, you'll see that picture of a knot representing the ability to measure speed by throwing a line off a boat and counting how many knots go through your hand in a specified period of time. So you have to measure time for that too uh, to determine your speed. Again, we'll explain that more later. And then uh, Galileo uh, first used a telescope to look at celestial objects in 1610. So by 1675, you're good. You can use a telescope. And the instruments for measuring angles have gotten better as well. And in fact, these telescopes get connected later to the instruments for measuring angles, and it becomes a lot easier to do that part. But measuring time is still extraordinarily difficult. Think about taking a grandfather clock on a ship. A pendulum's not going to work very well. The measuring direction has gotten a lot better. There are some compasses you can use. And maps, because a lot of exploration is being done, are starting to get better and better as well. But you're still pretty unsure about where you are. Again, this is just a relative scale graph where we're just showing things getting better and in what proportion. Now, by 1750, clocks have improved tremendously uh, thanks to John Harrison, uh, who you'll hear about in the in the Prediction X course and what it is that he did to improve timekeeping at sea by doing away with things like pendulum clocks. And astronomical measurement and measuring angles have also gotten much more accurate. And measuring speed, still not so great because you have to measure distance and time at the same time and measuring distance at sea is still quite difficult. So you're doing a lot better than 1200 AD but you're still pretty likely to get lost. And then if you get to almost now in the year 2000, you essentially have no error in any of these things as long as your technology works really well. And when I say no error, I mean for the purposes of human navigation on the surface of the Earth. If you're talking about you know, to quantum accuracy, of course you still have mistakes. But we're very used to this kind of level of accuracy now, again, thanks to things like smartphones, which, by the way, also include a huge amount of math in order to make them work that people don't usually think about. So anyway, what we're talking about in this section of the course is, again, what happens if you have no iPhone, your iPhone goes dead, and you are lost. And this complicated flowchart actually shows you exactly what you would need to do in order to find your latitude and longitude, starting from that little yellow bubble. And if you continue on in Prediction X, you will no longer be lost at sea should your iPhone go dead.